All right, hello everybody, this is Coleman here, back with another Airsoft video. This is going to be kind of like a review slash information video on the PDI uh, V-Trigger for the MZ Type 96. I think that stands for Marusin, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I know that it's a little bit frustrating when you're buying Airsoft parts online because a lot of them are made in foreign countries and the information on them is not really that complete. And even if they do provide information, like you can see on the back of the packaging, the grammar is awful and it's really hard to understand because it's translated. Um, and even if you do buy off of a uh, like US website or whatever, uh, they don't really provide that much information either. Like when I bought this, I think it was off of Airsoft Atlanta, they pretty much just said, it's a trigger for the Maru's and Type 96. And so it didn't really give you a lot of information in terms of like the actual features of the part. And it didn't give you any information in terms of dimensions if you're putting it into a different rifle or whatever. And so today my plan is to clear that up for you guys. All right, so when you first get the part in the mail, uh, besides like the retail packaging, this is exactly what it should look like. So out of the PDI factory, this is how they package it. Um, so like I said earlier, it does have a bit of information on the back, but it's more so um, just saying what kind of material it's made out of. And I think here it has a little diagram of how to how to install it, but it's pretty hard to understand. So I thought I'd just show you guys in full English and uh, sometimes people learn better if you just show them. So uh, take this stuff out of the package. So you can see that when you get the actual trigger, um, the first thing you'll notice is it's actually like pretty hefty. Uh, the material that they make this out of is really good. I think they call it Duralumin. It's their own type of aluminum, I guess, uh, or whatever it is. I don't, I don't know what type of material it is, but it's really hefty and it's a really nice piece. Like the, the paint job on this is really good. It's not uh, something that will scratch easy. And they also have their nice logo there. Um, so overall, like the, the build quality is really good. And I mean, you're paying like a hundred and I think, what was this? $160 or something um, for a trigger. So, you know, it, it better be well made. Um, so it comes with a set pin made of the same material as the actual trigger itself. Um, and you want to use this one instead of your the one that came in your gun because that one is pretty shitty especially if you're buying like a kind of chinese knockoff gun so you want to use the one that they give you uh they don't give you any screws for uh screwing it into the receiver you have to use the screws that are actually on your gun um but here i'll uh, take this apart and show you the internals of it it's a pretty simple build but it works really well um, and later in the video, I'll also give you all the dimensions of it, where all the screw holes are and stuff like that, so that you can uh, you can measure your own rifle and make sure it'll fit. Because I know that when you're buying parts for guns, it's really frustrating because you kind of always have to gamble to make sure they'll fit properly and all that kind of stuff. So you have to take out uh, three screws here, and this should open up. Oops, this should open up the receiver all right so this little faceplate comes off here and I just lubed this by the way that's why it's all greasy um, so this is just the faceplate for the trigger set and you can see that the actual like uh, build walls in here are really thick and it's actually really strong the entire uh, build but um, you here you have the trigger obviously and a little spring with it take that off and you have your trigger post and you also have your uh first sear your i think it's called the trigger sear is usually what people call it uh let me try to take this out here okay hold on maybe i here i won't take this out because it's uh, a little bit hard to get back in but anyway i uh one little modification i did is I put a piece of duct tape right here on, I don't know if you can see that properly on the camera, uh, right here where the trigger hits the back sear. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to have a shorter trigger pull. And you can adjust the trigger pull on here, but not as much as I wanted. Uh, I wanted like a hair trigger pretty much, and you can get close to that with their adjustment, but uh, not quite. And speaking of that, there is an adjustment screw underneath where you can adjust the length of the trigger pull. Obviously the, the weight of the trigger pull will still remain the same, but it's just for the for the trigger pull length. Because when you get it in the box, the trigger pull is like super long. Um, so you you'll probably want to adjust that. 
Um, and then there's also a screw on this side. Uh, I don't know if you can see that right here, which actually locks in the uh, screw on the bottom for adjusting the trigger pull. So there's two screws, but only one adjustment. Okay. Um, and then here is the piston sear attached with two springs. And all of this, the whole box, I think, what, what did it say on the back? The whole box is made out of their Duralumin, Dur and then the two sears are made out of um, carbon steel. All machine is what they said. I'll uh, link a picture of this as well in the description so you can get all the information for yourself. Uh, but that's what the build quality is like. So I'll get all this stuff back together and we'll keep going with the review. All right, so one other thing I forgot to mention was that there is a couple modifications you have to do to get this to fit into your UTG L96 Shadow Ops Sniper. I want, I just want to make that clear just so you guys know what uh, L96 I'm talking about. Um, anyway, the two modifications are on the safety right here. I'll make sure you guys can see. So these little openings right here need to be widened uh, because on the stock safety, the holes are too narrow for the two screws that come with this. By the way, the two screws that screw up into the receiver do not come with the trigger. Only the two safety screws do, um, just so you know. Um, and so, yeah, you just have to widen those holes so that the safety slides properly uh, back and forth here. And you're also going to have to modify the receiver just a little bit. Um, the two screw holes are in... Uh, the right spots they fit exact for the UTG gun, but the opening right here where the trigger or sorry where the piston sear uh, Goes up into the receiver. It has to be filed down So we're at the back of the receiver here And so at the back right where my finger is this has to be filed down just on the top lip there uh, and the reason for that is when you pull back uh, When you pull back your cylinder uh, The cylinder will hit the piston sear and push it back like this but on the UTG gun, the uh, receiver gets in the way a little bit. And so it's about right where my index finger is. And it holds it back from going all the way down. And so you'll end up scratching your cylinder on the way back because the piston sear rubs up against it. So if you file that down and make it flush, then you shouldn't have any problems. And I'll just show you on my cylinder here. Uh, you can see a bunch of scratching and that's just because I didn't file it down. But if you file it down first, then put in your cylinder, you should be good to go. So that's, only, that's the only modifications you have to do to get this to fit in your gun. All right, so now on to the dimensions part of the video. So I'll give you the first dimension here, and that is from the top or the front receiver screw to the back receiver screw hole, okay? So center to center, it is 83 millimeters. I'm not sure if you can see those lines, but it's 83 millimeters center to center. Uh, the next one I'll give you is the actual length of the box. So the length from here to here is 75 millimeters. Okay. Um, and then I'll give you the top length here, which is a bit longer. Top length is 82 millimeters or sorry, 87 millimeters. Um, and then the width of the box so across here is 20 millimeters. Uh, what other measurement should I give you? Um, oh, the piston sear from the top of the box sticks out eight millimeters. Um, and then, oh, I'll give you the trigger. So from the bottom of the box to the tip of the trigger, I have to give you an estimate, is about 40 millimeters. So that should be enough dimensions to make sure this fits in your gun. Oh, and maybe I'll do one on the set pin as well. The total length of the set pin is 85 millimeters. Okay. Um, and I guess I'll give you the width as well. Width is 5 millimeters this way. And then this one is five millimeters as well, so it's square. And then the height that this st sticks up from the little lip here, which catches the trigger box on the bottom, is 55 millimeters. Okay, so that should be enough dimensions. All right, so now I'll go on to the installation part of the video. Um, so 
I mean, it's pretty simple. It's just a trigger, but I'll show you anyway. So what you start out with is just the box. You want to make sure that the set pin is outside of the box first. And so the first thing you want to do is unscrew these two screws here. And this is for where the safety goes. Alright, so you can put your safety in. This little arm here goes into the trigger box itself. And all this does is it just interferes with, I believe it blocks the, uh, what does it block if I remember correctly? I believe it blocks the actual uh, trigger sear itself. It just sits on top of it so it can't move. So if I uh, push it forward here, I shouldn't, oh, maybe I have to pull it back, sorry. Okay, I don't know why this is not working. Oh, I think, oh, okay, sorry, that's my bad. Uh, since I put this tape here, um, I actually can't use the safety on my gun uh, because the trigger doesn't go back far enough. So I think that's part of the reason why you can only adjust the adjustment screw so far. Uh, but anyway, when you get yours, the safety will slide back and forth after you file that part down. Uh, so once you get that in, you can put these screws back in. All right, so once you got these screws in, your safety should work. I tightened down these uh, screws harder than they should go because my safety doesn't work anyway. Uh, but I think on yours, you're probably going to have to loosen these just a little bit just so your safety can slide back and forth properly. Um, but for mine, I'll keep them tightened. And now once you have this part, you can take your receiver and put the trigger in. So you want to put the piston sear up through this rectangle hole. Um, I believe it would go this way, sorry. Like that. Uh, and like I said earlier, these holes should line up perfect. And on the screws here, um, my gun, I believe, came with these washers, just by the way it was assembled or whatever. Uh, but if yours doesn't, you can either use just like a uh, gearbox, shims, or some other thin washer, uh, just so that the screw doesn't uh, uh, puncture through this hole here, because the screw head is pretty small. So we'll put these screws in like so. All right, now that the trigger's in, all we have to do is put the cylinder back into the gun. So. You can slide down the cylinder and when you put in the cylinder, it's not going to go in right away. What you have to do is, I don't know if you can just pull the trigger here, you might be able to. Oh yes, okay. So when you push in your cylinder, the the uh, piston sear is going to get in the way. I'm not sure if you can see that down there. Um, but all you have to do is just pull the trigger for it to go by and should go in and you can lock it down. And now what you do is you take your uh, set pin and you wanna make sure that this little like lever here, this little arm, you want that to be facing towards the trigger when you push it in. Sometimes it requires a little bit of force, that's okay. And it should snap into place and now you can cock it back and fire it and it works perfectly. All right, so now onto the final part of the video, the actual review. Um, I'll go over just kind of like the benefits and drawbacks to the part itself and just some other information you might want to know. Um, so 
The first thing I'd like to say is that the cost is pretty high. I think I got this for, I think I said earlier, like $160. I think that was US as well. Um, so it's pretty expensive, but honestly, if you're looking for a good quality part, this is pretty much the best you can get. Uh, I know I haven't tried the Lalax parts yet, and it's, I guess, can't really say much without trying them, but I can just already tell that this is like a really good quality part. And if you have any heavy duty springs in here, like say you're going for like 550 to 600 FPS or something like that, you're definitely going to need a trigger like this. Um, and if you don't want to spend this amount of money on a trigger, you can always get the Chinese knockoff ones like the Action Army, um, or maybe that's not Chinese, I don't know, but they're really cheap. Or you can get um, the specially made ones from uh, Airsoft stores, like I know Airsoft GI has their own stuff, um, and other stores do as well. Um, and if you're wondering where I actually bought this, I bought this from Airsoft Atlanta uh, in, where is it, Georgia or something like that. Um, and besides that, there's not really a lot of US websites that sell sniper parts uh, that I found, like mainstream ones. Um, so if you want any PDI parts, you can go to xfire.com. It's their actual distributor's website, and you can find all the PDI parts uh, available on that website there. Uh, you'll have to pay in yen, and you'll obviously have to trust that uh, they're not stealing your credit card, but you know they're a trusted company, and honestly, you should be pretty safe with them. Um, so that's xfire.com if you want to buy any of them. And as for actual build quality, like, like I said earlier, the metal that they use is really high quality. It's really sturdy. Uh, there's no wobbly parts or anything like that. Everything's full metal. Um, and like I said, I also like how there is an adjustment screw for the trigger pull length. Um, and other than that, like it's a really simple design and it's just really strong and everything's really beefy and I just like it. And so once you get those modifications done, this will pretty much work perfectly in your rifle and you'll really like it. Um, so that pretty much does it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, I will see you in the next one.